Um, so <clears throat> I'm just going to start by like recalling some things that some things that we said from last time. Um, um, the so we defined this notion last time of this like block encoding, where we said that we have a a uh, unitary U, which was a block encoding. Um, of uh, matrix A if um, if we can write U in this form where U has like an A and it's like top left block or top left uh, like as a submatrix in the top left. <laughs> and then the one way I wrote this was um, I defined this like uh, I sort of had this like selection operator that like went into this like top left corner, and I said that this was equal to a. Or alternatively, um, like um, if the dimensions match up, you can write it in terms of um, like selecting via qubits. Okay. Um, and here the Q is like the a gate complexity of U. Okay. And what we wanted to, where we left off was, I had this statement that I sort of asserted and I didn't prove, which is that um, if you have a block encoding, um, sorry, if you have a, okay, so we were looking at like polynomials, applying polynomials to block encodings. And we had some polynomial um, that's even or odd, and um, it's bounded by one for all x in minus one, one. And in this setting, um, I stated that we can uh, take a Q block encoding of A, and then we map it to um, something like, I'm gonna write something here, it's like maybe D log D plus Q, block encoding of the polynomial applied to A. All right, so recall that here this polynomial, just uh, this PSV just denotes, if you have X cubed, it gets converted to like A, A dagger A, and like if it has X squared, it gets converted to like A dagger A, okay. Um, so the, what I'm going to do in, lecture, in this lecture is try to disprove this theorem. Um, so, yeah. That's a great point. So, I'm, so here, I might make this mistake more, um, but so just keep that in mind if there's any more issues with this. Um, but P is degree, so I'm gonna, I made this mistake here. So it should be like, okay. So I'm using, I think I'm gonna use D for the dimension and N for the degree. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> okay, so I'm gonna prove this. Um, so it might be a little bit tedious at times, so hopefully, It'll be uh, illuminating because I think it's a, it's a, what we're going to do is we're going to sort of analyze the expressivity of some types of uh, quantum circuits. And I think that's a useful, useful exercise. Um, okay. Any questions before I, before I begin? B is a block encoding. Yeah. Any other questions? So how this is going to work is that, uh, first of all, I'm going to uh, consider this notion of quantum signal processing, um, which is basically if you're looking at a unitary that's like two by two, and, my, and it's block encoding uh, something that is just a, like a, a real number. 
And I'm going to show how you can basically, so here it doesn't make sense to call it A anymore, I'll, I'll call it like X. And then I'll show how you can get uh, something that has X in the top left to something that has like P of X in the top left, or something like this. And then there'll be some like lifting to get this to work uh, for arbitrary matrices. Um, and this lifting will basically, it'll show that the same protocol will, will work, but um, if you just define it in the right way. Okay. So first off, I'm gonna d discuss um, quantum signal processing. And the idea here is that um, we have some matrix that we can apply as a black box, but sort of uh, we think about it as like a block encoding. So like we know it's a block encoding this X here, but we don't actually know what this X is. Okay. So I'm calling this R. And what we can try to do to interact with it is sort of intersperse um, other rotations, other single qubit rotations, that are going to look like the form here. And the idea is that like, okay, this comes from like signal processing intuition, but so I don't know if this is like exactly right, but like, Maybe R of X is our signal, and then we're somehow like controlling our signal, and then um, getting something that's like able to transform without necessarily knowing what the, the signal precisely is. Okay, and so we're going to define um, um, a QSP circuit, which is. Um, it has a bunch of um, it has a bunch of individual uh, real numbers, which are going to be our phase factors. Um, I guess I should say we're going to denote these phi j. <coughs> okay, and how we define our QSP circuit is it's going to be equal to, um, basically I'm going to interleave these, e, uh, these rotations with these uh, R of X's, which happen to be reflections. Um, you could also think about it as um, rotations in the X, poly X basis, and the rotations in the Z, and then you interleave these. Um, so here this is phi j, and this is phi zero, and the sigma z is, okay, um, here, where you're ex we're taking a rotation with respect to the poly z basis. Okay, and, okay, where this is like a product, we're imagining the product as being like uh, going from n on the left-hand side to one on the right-hand side. <clears throat> and so the question is what you can achieve with these sorts of uh, circuits. And so based on this, we can say that a polynomial is QSP achievable if there exists some um, phase factors um, such that um, QS, the, the corresponding circuit is going to give me something with like a P of X in the top left corner. Okay. And we want to figure out which kinds of polynomials are, are QSP achievable. And, um, oh, okay. And the way that you can do this is um, if you sort of just look at the first few terms and then sort of keep working your way up, you can notice that there's some recurrence that my entries of the QSP circuit satisfy. And what this is in particular is that um, 
if we consider um, if we consider QSP of some of um, let's say k plus k phases or something like this. Um, okay, so if we only consider performing our QSP up to the k phase factor, like the um, I guess the kth application of R, um, then we can write this in the form. Um, so p of x. Okay. So I'm gonna. So it's going to take this form. So basically, I have <coughs> uh, <coughs> and here, so I'm just gonna saying it has some form where these P, uh, PKs and QKs are all polynomials. QK, this bar means conjugate, so it means I'm taking um, the coefficients of the polynomial and then conjugating all the coefficients. And so um, I'm going to say that it, it looks like this, and then these PK satisfy the recurrence. Um, that I'm going to write down here. Um, Okay. Um, and we have some sort of base case that comes from, right, with QSP of, we only look at <coughs> um, one phase factor. This is going to look like e to the i phi e to the minus i phi, because we're just, we're not applying any r. It's just one of the, it's just this, this final term up here. <coughs> And so we can get that um, <clears throat> we get that this is uh, the base case is like what is it um, p zero is equal to <clears throat> each the i um, each the i phi and then q zero is zero yeah. Okay, and then you can see that <coughs> it does indeed like take this form. If I plug in these values, this is precisely this. Okay. <coughs> um, so to prove this, this is just some annoying calculation, but I'll go through a little bit of it. Um, <coughs> and the idea is that just that like, <coughs> if you wanted QSP like, you just want to compute what happens when you add another phase factor, another piece of your circuit. <coughs> so I'm considering up to k plus 1. And then this is going to be, I'm going to peel off the, the first um, the first element of the product. And then I'm going to have some. Um, the rest of it. Okay, <clears throat> and then we know that it takes this form from, <coughs> sorry. <clears throat> um, we know that it takes this form from here. I'm just gonna copy it. <clears throat> so, it's this guy, and then there's also um, this e to the i phi k plus 1 times r. And what this guy is, is it's e. Yes, I'm just going to do the multiplication. Okay. 
OK. And here you can see that what happens when I multiply things together is um, that, OK, so I have like a term here, this e to the i phi k plus 1 times px. This gives me this like first term of my pk. And then this second term, the square root 1 minus x squared, so they, they multiply together. And then so you don't get any um, root terms in my polynomial here. Um, and if you wanted to check, you could see that like, if I look at this like bottom corner term, um, I have some, the same thing, but instead um, I have this like 1 minus x squared, um, e to the minus i phi k, and then q bar of k of minus x. So that's what you get if you take this px, pk, and then take the conjugate and then a sub in minus x. So you're, so in this bottom right corner you're getting like, in this bottom right corner you are indeed getting something that looks like pk plus one bar. Okay. So, um, hopefully this should just confirm to you that this is like indeed what I'm, what I'm saying it is. Um, and so now that we have this recursion, we can sort of see what is happening to our polynomials. Um, and so one thing to, there's a couple things to note here. Um, first of all, um, it, how it starts off is that at p0, uh, at, at k equals 0, my p is even. And q0 is, OK, it's 0, so it's even or even and odd. Um, but I'm going to say it's odd. And whenever you compute this pk plus 1 and uh, qk plus 1, if uh, pk is even and qk is odd, then pk will flip the parity. Um, then, you know, so if this is, if pk is even, then x times pk is odd. If qk is odd, then 1 minus x squared times qk is odd. So what's happening is that um, if p0, q0 are even odd, then p1, q1 will be odd even. And you can keep going and then see that, um, for example, you know, like, you know, pk here, if it's even and qk is odd, then xqk is even, and so the whole thing is even, and so on. Okay. Um, so you can see that basically what's happening is that we're building up these polynomials. So these polynomials are increasing in degree by one each time, is the other thing to notice. <laughs> because we start off with p0 being degree zero, q0 we're saying is degree minus one. Um, and here we add one degree to, to pk, and then we add two degrees to qk minus one. But because qk is one degree lower, then there'll be degree, um, there'll be degree k, or pk plus one will be degree k plus one, or at most k plus one. Um, so there's like some things that you can notice by this recursion. Um, and okay, so. What you can actually show is that um, the sort of set of requirements that you need is um, essentially like what you can just visibly see from these um, recurrences. Um, so if you have some degree D polynomial, um, it's QSP achievable. Um, so we can find phase factors for it. Um, if and only if the following uh, holds, if and only if there exists some Q, so here this is like the Q from above, um, such that, first of all, uh, Q has degree um, at most n minus 1. Secondly, P and Q are like either even or odd or odd or even. Um, more precisely, right, because we said that P is degree N, P will be whatever parity that N is, and Q will be the opposite parity from that. And the final thing that we need is that uh, this equation holds. Um, 
Okay. Um, well, where does this come from? If we look at our lemma, we can see that what this is, is we're saying that um, this column has norm one. That's what this equation means. And so this is immediate. Uh, so like if you have a QSB phase sequence, then the polynomials it implements must satisfy this because um, this QSP thing is a product of unitary, so it's unitary. Okay, so, so this has a norm of one for these QSP achievable polynomials. And this is the constraint that we, that we see um, showing up. Um, okay. So, um, hopefully I've argued that um, this direction, at least most of this direction, so if you have some QSP achievable polynomial, then you can look at the source corresponding P and Q that you get from this above recurrence, and then see that it satisfies, okay, that you have your Q that's degree one lower, at least one lower, and it, they're opposite parities, P and Q are opposite parities, and that you have this property that this has a unit norm. So this should just follow from the lemma. Um, and like unitarity of QSP. Okay. Um, now, in the reverse direction, where we have P and Q that satisfy these properties, and we want to show, uh, we want to show what, we want to give like an explicit construction for what the phases are, or just show that some phases exist. Okay. Um, so, how we can do this um, is we can do this by induction. Um, by the way, are there any questions so far about what I've talked about? Um, it's like a little technical. Yeah. Um, so here, I even odd, this basically means uh, P is odd or um, and Q is even or P is even Q odd. And here, by even, I mean that P of X is equal to P of minus X. And by odd, I mean P of x is equal to minus p of minus x. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess like the recursion is what's occurring like every time I do my um, reflection operator and then my rotation operator. So. Like, I'm imagining I'm doing these in, 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 in sound, however, however many steps. Um, um, well, your quantum walk operator is, uh, well, your, um, I think I think typically the quantum walk operator is defined for two of these time steps. I'm not I'm not sure though. Um like the typical one that you might see for like Grover or something. That's what you mean, right? I think that's type typically like two of these time steps, but it's like the same principle, I guess. So, so what I did was I, I defined this notion of achievable, which means if a polynomial is achievable, then I can get a block encoding, uh, get from a block encoding of A to a block encoding of P of A. 
So what I did is I constrained this to look at scalar guys. So um, and now I'm looking at their two by twos with like the top, top left being a scalar. And so you could still define this notion of achievability here, but only for like scalars. I'm looking at a subclass of this, which is which um, polynomials are achievable with these particular kinds of circuits. Um, so we're going to prove which ones are QSP, which polynomials are QSP achievable. Um, this will, all of the QSP achievable poly uh, polynomials will turn out to be achievable. And furthermore, um, uh, yeah, I guess this is like not, uh, um, this is this will follow by some like lifting argument, um, and there's some additional extra step. What we what we want is actually some things that are like slightly outside of this achievable uh, QSP achievable class, and I'll show how you, how you get those. Okay. Um, okay. Any other questions? Okay. So. Um, Arguably, I have one more annoying um, sort of matrix computation to do. Um, but the basic idea is that, like, okay, I have my P and Q, and I want to figure out um, how do I construct phase factors from this. <coughs> and so how I start is, I suppose, uh, um, I suppose um, P and Q satisfy He's like one, two, and three. Um, then what I can do is I can sit, I can try to figure out, I can try to work backwards, uh, and try to see like um, if I have some um, degree n polynomial, can I pull off uh, one of my steps of my quantum walk and then be left with an n degree n minus one polynomial? Um, and so if I can do that, then I can sort of apply induction to say that um, my whole uh, set of my whole polynomial can be described via phase factors. Um, and the thing to note is that like there's like a base case. Um, there's like a base case of um, <coughs> n equals zero. And as I mentioned before, what this what this what this corresponds to is like p being like e to the i phi, some like root of unity, and q being zero. So this is, um, so, so this is, this is my base case, and so then this corresponds to, uh, sort of as I might have alluded to, you can just look at the, look at these p and q, and then you see that this is a QSP with a, with phase factor of like phi, where you're, where you're just, uh, not applying X at all. Okay. So, what did I say I wanted to do? I said I wanted to take, a, like, sort of pretend that I could implement my function. Um, uh, and then I would get some, some matrix of this form. P bar of minus X. And I want to peel off one layer of like my supposed um, QSP circuit. Um, so that's um, one layer, and I'm taking the inverse. So I'm peeling off one layer. And then what I want to say is that this, you, with this, for a particular choice of, of var phi, that I can get this to be equal to some. I'm calling it p, p and down arrow and q down arrow here. Um, but these guys hopefully will be one degree lower. Um, okay. And so the thing to notice is that if 
these P down arrow and Q down arrow, if these are one degree lower, and however I define them, if they happen to be like the opposite parities, you know, even and odd, or um, uh, respectively, or like vice versa, then, um, then I can imply my inductive hypothesis to get that this is equal to um, QSP of some phi. Um, so here I'm, okay, so here this case is like, um, so inductive hypothesis. I'm taking P to be degree N plus one here. Okay. And then I'm looking, I, my inductive hypothesis says that I can find phase factors for this degree N thing. Okay. <clears throat> and the reason I can do this is because it'll satisfy all the criteria. So the main thing to check here is that your, uh, your equation here is satisfied for the P and Q down arrows. Um, and this will follow because by my assumption here that P, Q satisfy three, this uh, matrix is unitary. And so I mul I'm multiplying unitaries by unitaries, and so this matrix is unitary. And so you'll have that this column satisfies your equation. And so you can apply the inductive hypothesis. And then you'll get like, then, uh, then this will imply that, um, that uh, P, is, P is a QSP achievable, and the phase factors will be, um, well, it'll be phi zero through phi n, and then there'll be this additional var phi, if I can find what it is. Okay, because I like, I take this QSP and then I, and I move this, uh, this piece to the other side, and then I'll get an additional factor of, uh, phase factor of phi, var phi. Okay. Um, right, so, um, what is this expression? Well, I'm going to, what this is, is, um, I'm going to, what you end up doing is, uh, to do this is you just do the computation. Um, you like take this E phi of R phi sigma Z. Okay. You take this um, one step of my QSP circuit. I use that R as a reflection so that it's its own inverse. Um, and so this will look like um, the following. Um, Okay, and if you multiply these guys together, you'll see that what you need your, uh, what these expressions are, or what you, uh, what these P down arrow and Q down arrow, if you like pattern match between the two, you'll see that they need to be the following. Um, um, here. Okay, so this is a uh, like I guess pretty similar to the recurrence relation from before, um, if you remember that. Um, but the question is like, can we choose some phi so that these two have degree lower than the degree, or this p down arrow has a degree lower than the degree of p, and this q down arrow has degree lower than the degree of q, um, or at least like lower than degree n minus one. Now the way that you can see this is so. Um, by my assumption, I know that P 
P is some degree n plus one thing, and it is has parity the same as parity the parity of n plus one. So namely, this means that I can write this as a n plus one x to the n plus one plus I just uh, basically I just want to look at like the highest um, monomial, like sort of the leading coefficient, and seeing if it beca can become zero, and so on. And q of x is going to be equal to some b n x to the n, um, and so on. Oops. Okay. And okay, what's going on here is that um, if you look at the leading coefficients um, of p down arrow and q down arrow, the leading coefficient. Um, so it's like, this is like degree, this would be the degree n plus one thing for, um, for the p, and then this would be the degree n coefficient for q. These turn out to be the same. And this is um, e to the minus i phi of a n plus one plus e to the i phi of b and there's a minus sign. OK. And so the question is, can I find some var phi to make this 0? Um, and the answer is yes. Um, the thing to use is that um, it, what you can say is that um, a n and uh, a n plus 1 and b n have the same magnitude. And the reason to see this is that um, in this equation, okay, if you look at the leading coefficient of here, the leading coefficient is um, a n plus one squared, and the leading coefficient here is minus b n squared, and we know that they cancel out, right? So there's a term here that looks like x to the 2n plus 2, and this will have a term that's x to the 2n plus 2. And because this is equal to 1, um, it's equal to 1 as like polynomials. So you know that these two cancel and so that you know they have the same magnitude. And so you can just choose, uh, just choose e to the i phi to be like, like square roots of bn over an plus 1, something like this. Um, and this is going to, this is going to be some root of unity, and so, or not root of unity, but like some, something on the unit circle. And so you can actually cancel these out. Okay. Um, so that's like the proof. Um, yeah? Where? Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. I think that's a typo in my notes. Okay. Yeah, they are. Thanks. Any other questions? Yeah. So um, what I want to do is I want to take some my degree n polynomial. I want to find some degree n minus 1 polynomial such that they're, th they're the same properties, such that if I apply one more step of my QSP thing, I get to P and Q. Um, and so I just want to find some value of phi that will achieve, that'll achieve this. Um, and I sort of like worked in reverse a little bit. Um, but this will show you how you get this value of phi. Um, and you know, at the, if you wanted to, at the top of the statement, you could say, we choose this phi <laughs> to be this, this particular value based on the monomials. Um, and this will give you, like, then you could, like, you know, if you wanted to actually 
do this, which you shouldn't because it's not numerically stable, but you could then, like, you could take your P and Q, and then you could work backwards, work all the way down, you get to down arrow, and then further down. Um, any other questions? Okay. So there's one more characterization that I wanted to say, um, which I'm not going to prove because of time. Um, and what this says is that, um, so I know what my P and, what P and Q are that are like, what my P um, and Q can be such that these are, P is QSB achievable. achievable. Um, but this is actually like pretty constraining. It's not clear that if you give me a polynomial P that I can find such a Q that satisfies this. Um, but it turns out if I relax, uh, if I allow myself some more room, um, if I like give up control over the imaginary part of my um, complex polynomial, then I can actually um, get any real polynomial to be essentially achievable. Um, so I'm going to consider uh, two polynomials to call P real and Q real. And these are going to be real valued polynomials. Um, so, uh, so I'm just going to say, given this, um, there exists some P and Q that are uh, QSP achievable. Um, such that uh, P, the P real is like the real part of P. So, so here, these two can be complex valued or have complex coefficients. And um, so basically I can find a com like complex, I can, I can sort of take these real polynomials, I can add some imaginary part to them. And when I add my imaginary part, they'll be QSP achievable. So that's why I'm saying I can do. Um, and I can do this um, if and only if, uh, well, first of all, like, there'll be two properties, but the two properties will be the same as these two properties up here. So the properties will be uh, Q is degree at most n minus 1. Secondly, you'll have PQ are, um, you know, even or odd or odd or even. And the final thing that you need is that uh, these should all be the real parts. Um, it should be the exact same thing as before, the exact same um, equality. But instead of being an equality, it's an inequality. So I'm just saying, like, um, I have my P real and my Q real. They satisfy everything that I want, except they're maybe not summing to one. And then what I can do is I can add imaginary parts to make it sum to one. Um, and if I don't really care about what my value of Q is, I can just set this Q to be like zero or, um, yeah. And so this will give me some P that's QSP achievable, and the real part of P is um, this P real of, of my choice, provided that it is at most one. Okay, so this is like how you get. Um, so that you can from this you can get like um, sort of how you get that P real is a is a achievable in this like two by two setting is that you get some P that's QSP achievable. Um, such that the real part of P is this P real. And remember that this the only constraint that we really needed is that this is even or odd, and also that this uh, is bounded by one. Um, so this is, okay, this is for all x in minus one, one, by the way. Okay. 
And then what we could do is we could just say that like, so p is going to be equal to some p real plus like some imaginary part, call p imaginary. And so I can achieve this with some phase factors phi. I can also achieve the conjugate um, with the phase factors minus phi. <laughs> so um, I don't know if that's obvious, but. Um, and then once you have that both p and p, uh, p conjugate are uh, QSP achievable, you do like the linear combinations of unitaries to get that one half of p plus p bar, which is your p real is, okay, well, you're doing a linear combination of unitaries of a QSP circuit. So it's not like strictly QSP achievable, but it is achievable. And so this is how you get um, that any real polynomial you can achieve, at least in this two by two case, where you're like doing a block encoding of a scalar guy. Um, are there any questions? I'll, I'll show how to lift this now. Um, right, so I don't have much time, but I'll try to explain. Um, so recall that what we had is we had some, um, in the setup for the beginning, we had that U is a block encoding, um, of A which means that we can write U as some block matrix where A is uh, in the top left corner, and then we have some other matrices in the other parts. And how can we, um, and what we have is, okay, I'm going to define a couple operators. So I'm going to define pi r as being the, um, the identity. Um, so here this is um, R by C. And so pi R is just going to be the projector onto the part, the A part of um, the right-hand side. And I'm going to define pi L to be the projector onto the left-hand side. And the way that I define this is so that um, pi L U pi R is equal to A0, 0, 0, 0. So I'm going to define these operators. And so what I was doing before is I was sort of um, taking my original matrix, or sorry, taking my scalar X, and I was doing some rotation um, sort of between X and these like other parts of my matrix. And so you can sort of, uh, Pattern match and try to figure out what the right thing is in the more general setting. Um, but I'll just tell you. So if we have some phase factors, we can define this uh, uh, quantum singular value transformation circuit as being basically the product of, um, I'm going to write it as the following. There's some uh, now some issues of like parity. So I'm I'm just going to try to write it for the even case here. Um, so again, I'm I'm like interspersing, I'm interleaving um, my applications of the U with applications of some rotation. Um, and what this is going to be is it's going to be with respect to the projectors. So, um, so here, 2 pi L minus identity. This is the reflection across uh, the subspace defined by pi L. Same for pi R. And we're sort of applying U, and then we're doing this um, rotation, and then we're applying U dagger, and then applying another rotation, and so on. And this pi is actually a product here. <laughs> Sorry, this like it should be like j, and it's like 
Should be like J from one to N over two or something. Okay. And okay, how should I be looking at this? Yeah, question. This is phi 2j minus 1. This is phi 2j. Is that what you are asking? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, if I'm ever writing and it's confusing, there are also the lecture notes, which I'm copying off of. <laughs> um, any other questions? What's the goal of which one? Yes. I'm defining this u phi to get a block encoding of polynomials of A. Yeah. So, um, right, the hope is like I can pick some f value of phi such that um, what I get is P of A. Um, and there's a result that you can show. Okay, first of all, you should notice that, okay, if indeed I'm looking at my u and my u is R of x, block encoding x then this u phi is precisely the same thing as the QSP circuit. Um, you can stare at this and like, see that this is the case. And the main result here is that um, if P is QSP achievable um, with uh, these phase factors phi, then u phi is going to be a block encoding of P of A. So I'm saying that if P is QSP achievable, then it is also achievable in the block encoding sense. Right? Um, OK. So how am I going to prove this? I'm just going to show you what happens um, when I write everything out in terms of block matrices, and you should hopefully see sort of what's going on. Um, okay, so I'm going to take, uh, specifically I'm going to look at what's happening with this QSVT, um, this uh, U5 that I just defined. And something I'm going to note is I'm just, first of all, I'm going to write down what these, these guys are. OK? And I'm going to not really, I'm going to sort of be a little bit loose with defining dimensions here. Because when I define these, they're all going to be different dimensions, but the products are going to work out, so it'll be fine in the end. Um, what this is, is it's e to the phi 2j times i, e to the minus i if you just look at what this guy is. It's a block matrix where you have some, uh, it's basically, if you think about it, it's sort of like um, the same thing as my rotation from before, except I do it on a large subspace all at once. Okay, similarly, I can say that e to the i uh, with uh, sorry, this is like this is in the exponent, just to be clear. Um, two pi r minus i, and what I'm getting is it's going to be exactly the same picture, but the dimensions are going to be different. So um, i phi two j plus one times the identity. Okay. And the final step here is um, what I'm going to say is like, okay, I'm going to call, okay, for the final step, um, I'm going to use this uh, decomposition called uh, the CS decomposition. And what this states is that if we consider a block matrix of the form if I have this like block encoding that I mentioned before, then we can actually write it in terms of a bunch of simultaneous 
uh, singular value decompositions. Okay, so what's happening is I am taking this, um, so V, D, W, dagger. What I'm doing is I'm getting a, an SVD uh, for every block, and they sort of uh, pair nicely together in the sense that my left singular ve uh, vectors of A are also my left singular vectors of D1, uh, of like U12. Like my, I have the same left singular vectors for both of these matrices, and I have the same right singular vectors for both of these matrices. So that's what's happening there. And now what I can do is I can notice that if I look at what this guy is, this V, so what I have here is I have this matrix U. Okay. My matrix U, I'm sort of interleaving with these polynomials here. So U, and then on the left-hand side is going to be one of these pi Ls, right? So you have a, have a U, and then a pi L, and then a U dagger, and then a pi R. The thing to notice is that, um, to make it simpler, what's happening is that this V can actually commute with um, this, or sorry, this pi L. Right? If you look at what's happening, and you compute this times this versus this times this, they will commute. Again, I'm being messy with dimensions. Um, but if you were trying to be formal, this A here is, uh, this, this, these blocks are the same as these blocks in terms of sizes. And then here, V1 and V2 are square. W1 and W2 are square. And then these have the same dimensions as these. So they're actually commuting, genuinely. Okay. And similarly, w and my pi r commute. And so if you look at what's happening, um, right, I had this expression that's sort of like u and then this e to the i phi pi r or pi l. And then u dagger and then e to the i pi phi pi r. OK, and then I'm writing this as v d w dagger. And then W, D, dagger, V, dagger. This is the uh, conjugate transpose. I can see that these terms are, in fact, um, cancel out. So U phi is going to be basically the same as like D phi, up to some change of basis. And then finally, the thing to note is that what this guy D is, if you look at what it is, it's going to be a bunch of entries, and the entries are going to be of the form sigma 1, um, and so on. They're going to be of this form. And so on. So, so I guess a way to write this is that it's going to be C S S uh, minus C, or S is square root of one minus C squared. So C and S are diagonal matrices, and then if I look at every particular two by two block, it'll be of this form of like a reflection of the corresponding sigma i, where the sigma i's are the singular vectors of a, the singular values of a. Right, so. Here, my D11, which I'm calling C now, are my singular values of, D, of uh, A. And then I'm doing this rotation operator with respect to sigma I. So if you work it out, what's happening is that when you're doing this QSVT, you're doing simultaneous QSP on all of the sigma I's, all of your singular values at once. Okay. Um, so that's like the most important thing. And if you wanted to actually prove this, what you would do is you would go back up here, so you would notice this C, S, S minus C. You would go back up here, look at your proofs, and then syntactically replace all of the X's with C's and all of the square root of one minus X squared with S's, and then it would every, everything would go through immediately. So that's like how you would actually prove such a thing. 
Um, more is in the lecture notes that I don't have time to cover, but um, that's going to be it. Thanks.